Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the authority physician and coach. Today we have with us Pasquale Saketa, who's the president of CFIG Wealth Management, and we'll be talking about market risk. Pasquale, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mike. Hey, so I'm looking forward to talking with you because I think a lot of times people recognize that there's risks out there, and if you know about them, then you can address them. So I want to dive into market risk, but first, give us a little bit of your story and your background, and how did you get into the financial services industry? Well, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I started while I was still in college, and it was a choice between two jobs. One was investment related where you needed a security license. And the other one was an insurance company because it was outside Hartford and Hartford at the time being the insurance capital of the world. Um, So I uh, went, uh, I applied for both and I got the one with the securities license. So while I was still in school, uh, we began working with mutual funds back at a time when not a lot of people knew what a mutual fund even was. And from there, I started my own firm, and uh, there's been some periods of evolution ever since where uh, things, you know, change and you have to grow with it. And uh, estate planner, uh, we have a a registered investment advisory firm as well as an insurance agency that uh, that is under our. CFIG wealth management umbrella, so to speak. And we are completely independent, not affiliated with any banker or insurer. And we completely focus on uh, our clients' long-term planning. You know, before we dive into, you know, how to mitigate market risk and what it is and all of that, um, something jumped out at me that you just said about independent, completely independent. And so I want you to Um, go a little bit deeper on that, because I think that sometimes people don't realize the full value of that. Whereas I used to be back in the late nineties in the um, mortgage industry. And I know if you worked for where I worked for um, JP Morgan Chase Bank, all you could offer is their products. And it was limited. Sometimes you wish you could do a different product, but you didn't have it. So talk a little bit about the flexibility that provides you to your give to your clients being an independent advisor. Well, it's the best example I have really is for clients to understand what true independence means. And a lot of times uh, financial advisors will use certain words to describe certain things that are just generic in nature. But I use an example. If my client and their IRA would like to own sheep in New Zealand, we can make that happen. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and if that's a good investment, then we can make it happen, huh? <laughs> right. And so it's it's the independence is we, we don't have any kind of list um, that tells our advisors, you know, you can only work with these products because we have a deal on the back end or something like that. Uh, we are completely independent. So we can choose any mutual fund we want to work with. We can choose any portfolio we want to work with. But our core portfolio, uh, we manage in-house for our clients on a truly independent basis. So our goal is to have the most diversified portfolio with the least amount of risk and volatility with the lowest internal costs. That's what our Mm. primary goal is. And our clients benefit other ways by having that kind of independence, namely uh, in the tax area where it becomes very tax advantage to control what you have. Mm -hmm. And so let's dive into a little bit of, Oh, go ahead. uh, What I generally tell people is uh, most financials financial advisors would, will claim to be independent if, if they don't work in house for a particular firm uh, or, or, or one firm. But being independent means that you should be able to represent your client 
and use whatever product or service is available to help them meet their needs. That's what true independence is. So we do not have any kind of proprietary lists or products or anything that would preclude us from using whatever uh, products or services we need to help our clients achieve their goals. And that's what we focus on. Yeah, I think that is so important is it's not what's in it for you. Like, oh, here's the flavor of the month, this product we need to push to clients. It is what is the client need? And then we've got a whole suite of opportunities out there that we can pull from here, pull from there and put together a safe retirement plan. So talk a little bit about this market risk we started off thinking about. Um, we we all know what the market is. So how would a major market ter- downturn impact retirement savings other than the obvious? Like downturn is bad, that affects retirement savings. But what are some of the nuances that go into that? Well, uh, Warren Buffett has a lot of uh, interesting sayings when it comes to uh, market risk and, and how he invests. And everything that he does is primarily for the long term. I have never known, nor have I heard or read anywhere, that he bought and sold something the same day or or in a short period of time. Uh, From the beginning of his career, he's been very long-term focused. And what that means is that you believe whatever asset you're investing in today to be of value so that over time that the, the value of that asset if you're if you're buying it at a good value today over time it should become more and more valuable and become you know uh, an investment that uh, in your situation is going to provide you with whatever it is for your goals so the this thing to think about is uh, in a portfolio when you look at market risk in a simplistic basis is you look at whatever price you pay for something. And if that price is higher, that means you made money. If the price is lower than you paid for it, you lost money. Mm -hmm. In very simplistic terms, that's market risk. The way that it affects people in retirement or, or a person's retirement savings is that if, for example, if you have a million dollars saved for retirement and you have a diversified portfolio, And let's say that it's market oriented. So the market goes down 20%. Now your million dollar retirement portfolio is worth $800,000. But the key is not so much that it's worth 800 because hopefully it'll come back to a million and then keep growing there going forward. We're going to have up up and down years no matter what happens. No market will continually go up and no market will continually go down. at least if we plan to be here. So the the main focus is, or, or the, the way that uh, market risk or market downturn will affect retirees is that if they need income from this portfolio, they will be selling more shares during or after a market downturn than they would have mm-hmm. if the market was relatively stable or increasing. And what happens is when you have to sell more shares, those are shares you do not have that will go up in value in the next upturn. And that's how it affects retirement savings more than any other way is from the cash flow standpoint. And you feel like you, like, for instance, it's, it's, you don't have a choice. If you need that amount of money to live because that's part of your retirement plan, it's not like, oh, I just want to buy a rowboat. You know, if you need that money, you need that money. And so if you're in a market downturn and you need to pull money out, now you're pulling money out and it's in a losing uh, a, a sector, losing position. So it kind of amplifies upon itself, right? Yeah. And that's what happens to the market in general. The more people mm-hmm. sell, the more the market will go down. Uh, it just, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's a self-feeding frenzy. Uh, the thing to, the way that we try to do that is we try to put our clients in a situation where they never, and I really, I, I, I've, one of my sayings is never say never or always, but our goal is to never have a situation where a client has to sell anything because mm-hmm. we have planned for that 
in advance. So we, in our core portfolio, you know, right now we're uh, on an average basis, we're more than 20% in cash and a really solid market because uh, number one, we're waiting for opportunities and those opportunities will come. But number two, uh, for cash flow purposes, we, we try not to put our clients in a situation where anything has to be sold prematurely. And also, I would suspect that um, people feel like they're, you know, chasing catching up. If you did have to sell a position or pull money out while the market's down, now all of a sudden you feel like, oh, I got to catch up. So let's make some different moves and maybe increase risk. And then all of a sudden it just becomes compounding the other way. So managing that risk, I would venture to say, is something that is really, really powerful from a psychological standpoint. True. So how do you make sure that your clients are aware of and comfortable with the level of risk that they're setting up? Because you can put you can put together a plan that's as risky as can be, and you can put together a plan that's all cash. So how do you assess that level of risk so that they understand it and, and uh, can set it up the way they feel comfortable with? Uh, and in that situation, uh, generally speaking from the beginning by having a relationship with the client and knowing you know their their current total assets and establishing what their goals are short term and long term we right from the start we get a pretty good idea of what clients are all about and it just uh by the more we know about the client the more it just becomes uh inevitable that we have to uh, put together uh, a total package that will meet the client's needs. So for example, most people are familiar with a 60-40 portfolio where, you know, 60% stocks, 40% bonds, and, you know, you pull out a certain amount over time if you need income, but it's very difficult to make that work anymore. So, uh, what we do is based on what those clients goals are we sort of back in the level of risk that's needed so if there are certain things that we can do to mitigate the risk then we can have more of a portfolio that's aggressive if we can't because of a client's age for example if we can't do certain things to mitigate the risk then it would be more of a balanced portfolio uh, from a security standpoint and certain clients can take advantage of certain, for example, insurance products that uh, carry certain guarantees. But when you get to a certain age, some of those products are not available. So it all really depends on the goals of the client. And then it depends on what we can do to back into the risk tolerance that they're, that they're okay with, but also that helps achieve their short and long-term goals. Yeah, I think that's a huge piece because a lot of times people put off planning for retirement till the the last minute kind of a thing, and they don't give enough runway, but yet they want the most perfect, well-performing you know, returns possible. But sometimes it's like, that's just, we don't have the time for that because to get that level of return, we would need to have high level of risk and that's not smart. So being able to advise your clients to start planning as early as possible and take the appropriate level of risk is huge. It's kind of like, um, don't ever go grocery shopping when you're really, really, really hungry. You're just going to buy everything in sight, you know? So, you know, don't try to put together a financial plan when you're under the gun. So having that time frame available, I would suspect is really a huge piece to putting together sane uh, recommendations. Absolutely. And when you're shopping, you know, they give you free samples for a reason. Yep. <laughs> um, the, uh, and, and the the thing that we you know uh, reinforce with our clients every opportunity that we get is our goal is we can't control down markets markets are going to go down every so often and certain events will make them go down even more at different uh, periods of time so when that happens most investments will go down in a big down market it just 
there, 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 you, you can't fight that, that, uh, the downward pressure. Our goal is always to outperform on the upside. And that's what distinguishes us from uh, most other investment or financial advisors. You know, when you think about, you know, mitigating or spreading out the risk, we hear the, the phrase diversification. Talk a little bit about diversification and can you be too diversified? Can you be, can you, can you get spread too thin? So how, what is your approach to advising your clients on d- diversifying their portfolio? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you have too many positions, not one position will be able to really provide any meaningful results. So, you know, if you have a hundred positions and one does well, it's not going to affect the other 99 very much. Um, so it's very difficult. So the thing is that you want to have certain core holdings that if those core holdings do well, as you hope that they will, and you plan that they will, hopefully, uh, you're going to have a situation where, you know, it's a meaningful return to the portfolio. And the example now is, uh, with a, with everyone talking about AI, uh, our, one of our core holdings is NVIDIA. It's been very popular and it just has gone through a split recently of their share price. Uh, so if you didn't, in this market, if you didn't have NVIDIA in your portfolio, uh, you know, you would notice that because of the large uh, uh, or the, in, uh, the large and increasing return from the NVIDIA stock. So it is... Uh, important to have a diversified portfolio, but it's also important not to have it overly diversified because then you won't really benefit from the results. So what is the, what is the, in other words, when you start talking to a client about um, sectors and, and diversification, do you, do you get into like, well, Hey, maybe what is your, some of your personal passions and like uh, AI that might not mean anything to one person, but they might really appreciate a different sector. So are you able to put together some things where they can kind of get behind those sectors and, and, or is it just a bunch of numbers? No, actually most of this kind of information never comes up with clients. The focus is usually on their goals and mm-hmm. their cash flow needs, or if they're looking to buy something, or it's it's really more needs driven than anything. So uh, most of our clients don't care what we invest in as long as we know what we're doing, and, and as long as there's not excessive risk or the costs. But we focus on all those things that are important. So. The clients know that our goal for our core portfolio is to have the lowest internal costs. Uh, you know, they we we emphasize that, so they know that and they understand that. Uh, the because the clients have access to their accounts twenty four seven, they can see exactly what we hold. So that transparency is what clients like. It's more so the transparency than having a say in exactly what's owned in that portfolio they just basically you know kind of can see everything come together they can see how the sausage is made so to speak Mm -hmm. Um, and and then do you recommend do you recommend reviewing like quarterly or annually or what's the frequency that you would relook at something well that depends on the client Uh, some it's very frequent some it's once a year maybe like a client dinner once a year um, so, you know, and some kind of in between, but there is information being exchanged on a regular basis. So it, the review is not as important as it might otherwise be because, uh, you know, clients are always getting information, especially when it's timely, when they need to know something. So, uh, also we have discretionary authority with our clients. So, We can do whatever it is that we believe that's in the best interest of our clients. Um, So I don't, I don't go calling clients and say, Hey, we're thinking about investing in, you know, GM. What do you think about that? You know, we, we don't ever do anything like that. It's our job to research and to have a buy list. And if we want to take on a position, 
that we feel is right for the client portfolio, then, you know, we are, we have the authority to do that on behalf of our clients. Yeah, that's really smart. So I think that a, a lot of these things we've been talking about here really are uh, highlighting the fact that there is risk, but sometimes calculated risk is just fine if it is dialed in the right way for your needs and your retirement needs. So I think so, so many of these things are uh, are really, really helpful to be keeping in mind. And it's not something you can just you know Google and do on your own. So I think that that is uh, something to, to, that clients need to remember as well. So um, if someone is listening to this thinking, maybe I need to get a second opinion or a second look at what I'm doing, what's the best way they can learn more and then I'll also reach out and connect with you. Well, our uh, website address is www.cfig-wealth.com. And our phone number is 203-221-0200. We're in Westport, Connecticut. Excellent. Well, Pasquale, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a real pleasure talking with you today. You too, Mike. Thank you for your time. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.